Hello guys, how are you doing? I'm giving you a warm welcome uh, to this course called Food and Beverage Cost Control. Um, it is a good course of which I'm inviting you to uh, join this session. So the course is called uh, Food and Beverage Cost Control and uh, it has the purpose of giving students skills or trainers or trainees skills and knowledge about cost control and cost management of course in a food and beverage by establishment and uh, students for them to acquire those knowledge and skills are going to be introduced to a variety of control systems, standard procedures used in hotels. Uh, and it has the following objectives or outcomes. Uh, upon completion of this module, students will be able to demonstrate basic knowledge on costing and management. We shall get basic knowledge, like definitions uh, of different key terms uh, uh, which have been introduced to cost volume and sales relationship uh, we shall also establish the means of maintaining consistency in all stages of food flow that is purchasing receiving storing issuing processing or production and also service so we shall look at standards control measures that we should apply on each and every control point. We shall also get different formulas uh, that we may use to evaluate our cost and also uh, maintain or manage our stores. Uh, it has got six units of which the first one is uh, of which the first uh, uh, of which the first unit is about uh, introduction to food and beverage costing and management uh, it is just an introduction as you can see on the screen i hope i shared this powerpoint and um, it is a good and a well prepared powerpoint that you will much benefit from it uh, so if we can quickly start with the introduction um, is that in any in any food and beverage establishment um, for any person or any manager or any chef for him to be counted successful he must be a good controller a good food and beverage cost controller because mostly uh, F and B managers or food and beverage uh, restaurant managers or chefs are going to be evaluated in terms of uh, they are going to be evaluated depending on how they control their food cost, how they control their cost. Of course, if you are good cost controller, it means you are making profit and that is one of the general objectives of any f and b depart or of any f and b establishment food and beverage uh, food and beverages labor costs generally represent between 60 percent and 70 percent of the total cost of any restaurant operation uh, yeah the objectives of this chapter we shall be able to define different costs 
different terms used in cost. Uh, we shall also provide examples of different types of cost. We shall also have several examples illustrating monetary and non-monetary concepts. We shall also describe the significance of cost to sales relationship by identifying different or important formulas that we can use to uh, compute the cost uh, in hotel or to, co to compute the sales. Yeah, food and beverage cost, uh, food and beverage cost control can be defined as the guidelines and regulations of the cost and revenue of operating the catering activity in a food and beverage establishment. F and B cost control is about guidelines, setting guidelines, setting rules regarding cost management in order to get revenues, in, in order to get good revenues, in order to get income. So we must have guidelines or standards to be followed and standard procedures. So uh, food and beverage cost control is about standard and standard procedures that are applied at each and every control point. And as I said in the introduction, we have most almost seven control points, which are menu planning, purchasing, receiving, storing, issuing, production, and serving or service. So therefore, for you to have a proper F and B cost control, you must have standards at each and every control point. Uh, in food and beverage uh, business, cost is defined as an expense to a hotel or to a restaurant that sells food and beverages. So, food and beverages are consumed when they are used waste all uh, you cannot just uh, incur food and beverage cost without using the raw materials that we get uh, usually from suppliers. And you can either need, you compute the cost either on a daily basis or monthly basis, as you shall see. Let's look at different cost concepts or different terms or types of costs. Fixed cost and variable cost. When you say fixed cost, are those costs that are normally and affected by changes in sales volume, such as real estate taxes, insurance premium, depreciations, repairs, maintenance costs, rent, etc. So when we say fixed costs, are costs that are that cannot or that are not normally affected by changes in the sales volume. So they remain constant even if you are having a, a small number of guests in your restaurant or customers or even if you have a big number of customers the, the, those costs will remain constant those are called fixed cost we also have variable costs variable costs are those costs that are related to the business volumes it means they can change with the change in the business volume and vice versa uh, so those are variable cost for example food cost uh, overheads mostly change uh, in some time sometimes change with the change in the business volume so that is a variable cost that they are costs that change with the change of the business if the business volume increases Variable costs also are going to be affected. So we have what we call labor cost. Labor cost or payroll cost is includes salaries and wages given to employees as their pay. So uh, when you say labor cost is both variable and fixed in that salaries are fixed while wages are variable. So because we normally need uh, casuals, those who are paid in terms of wages, they are called casual workers. When we need casual workers, it is because we have 
uh, uh, big volume of business, that's when we need or we get uh, casual wage, uh, casual workers. So uh, payroll cost or labor cost is uh, both variable and fixed cost. Controllable and non-controllable costs. When you talk about controllable costs, are those that can be uh, can be changed in the short term. Those are what we call controllable costs. You can control them. You can manage them. They change. They are able to change in a short term, like direct variable costs, wages, advertising promotions, utilities, maintenance costs or administration and general expense costs, so uh, general expenses. So you can control them. You can decide to minimize them or increase them. Those are called controllable costs, including food cost or beverage cost. These are controllable costs. And managers, we say that are going to be evaluated on how they control their food or beverage cost. Non-controllable cost, are those costs that cannot normally be changed in a short term, such as fixed cost? They don't change in a short term. Yes, they can change, but after a long period of time, like rent. So if you rent a house, if you, re you are renting a restaurant facility, so if you have a contract of one year, uh, so the, 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 the rent cost will remain the same until one year ends. So it, is, it cannot change in a short term. Those, those are called the controllable cost. Even if the business increases or decreases, the, 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 the fixed cost will not be affected. These costs are not going to be affected. So you must, they will remain the same even in good times or bad times of, of the business, of course. Unit cost. Unit cost may be food or beverage portion, as in the cost of one item or our unit of work. In food and beverage business, unit costs are normally in average unit cost rather than actual unit cost. So when, when we say unit cost, for example, if you are going to buy um, uh, 50 kilograms of rice, so, and they tell you that one kilogram cost 1,500 Rwandan francs, for example. So it means the unit cost is that amount. So it means 1,500 is what we call unit cost because it is the cost per one unit. And we usually use, we are used to... Uh, to either kilograms, liters, sometimes pounds, um, uh, pieces, packets, tins, boxes, bags. Those are units that we usually use when you are buying or selling items. Um, total cost. When you talk about total cost, it is the summation of all or uh, unit costs or individual costs. So if you have, um, yes, it is, it is, it is the total amount uh, uh, you pay for all quantity, for the whole quantity you need, or it can be for a certain period, yes. So, for example, if you are buying 50 kilograms of rice and you are paying 1,000 500 uh, Rwandan francs per unit, it means for you to get the total cost, you must take 50 uh, kilograms times the cost of one unit for you to get the total cost. This is very simple. If you want to get the total cost, you must um, you must take the unit cost times the quantity you are given.
then you will get what we call total cost. I hope it is clear. So we can continue with the, uh, we can continue with the, the chapter. Then the prime cost. <clears throat> when you talk about prime cost, is the term used uh, in the hotel industry, mostly in the hotel industry, <clears throat> to defer to the cost of materials and labor. Excuse me. Uh, we said prime cost is a term used in the hotel industry to defer to the cost of materials and labor. So prime cost, in other words, is equal to uh, food costs or beverage cost plus payroll cost, that is labor cost. So if you want to get the prime cost you must take food cost or beverage cost plus labor cost that's what we call prime cost historical and planned cost historical costs these are the costs that we incurred in the past the all the costs of the past are recorded as historical cost and planned cost these are future or projected cost or budgeted cost so these historical costs are going to help us to budget for the future, to project for the future of what our cost may be. So it's good to keep records of all the costs that we get because uh, we, um, we may use it to project the future. Cost percentage vary considerably from one food service operation to another. This is due to many possible reasons. One reason of why uh, 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 cost vary from one establishment to another, it is because they use different profit margins. You may find that in one in this particular business they are using low profit margin and this depends on the relatively high business volume if you have high business volume in most cases you will prefer to go with the low profit margin whereby you are getting a very low uh, you are getting a low profit a lower profit but you are selling to a high volume or you may find that what another business is 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 doing or is has chosen to go with the the high profit margin but in most cases it is because they are uh, they don't have high business volume that's why mostly they prefer to go with a high profit margin so that even the the small uh, business volume they are having at least they are able to maximize profit sales when we say sales is a term uh, that is uh, used to define a revenue resulting from the exchange of a product and service so if 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 you get something uh, from uh, exchanging a product to all a service for a certain value that value you are getting is what we call a sell 
So uh, the sales concept in F and B operation is can be expressed in monetary form or non-monetary form. So you can either get it, get the sell in terms of money or in terms of services also. For example, you may you may decide to give food uh, to maybe a certain golf club, uh, free uh, food or beverages in exchange to advertising facility or services. So if you get, they gave you a, a chance to advertise on their playgrounds and then you decide to offer them with foods. So, or in any event, maybe there is an event that is being hosted in your country or in your region, and you want to advertise in that particular event. So you may decide to give food uh, in exchange to the advertisement service. So sales are not, not always expressed in terms of money. So total sales, total sales is the term that refers to the total volume of expressed in money term. For instance, any given period, such as a week or a month. So we mostly graduate total sales uh, after a certain period. For example, per certain event per day, per month, or per week, or per year. You can also graduate total sales by category. When you say by category, it means um, it, is, it is maybe you are graduating uh, total sales of maybe beef steak. Huh? So it means you are getting all the costs, all the sales of beef steak, not uh, that is on the menu. Maybe you leave other items. That is by category, by server. You may decide to uh, calculate total sales or to compute total sales by server. So you have maybe have many servers in a restaurant and you want to know how they sell and how which amount one has uh, uh, gained as a revenue or as sales. So you may decide to calculate sales per server, per seat. It is also possible. Sales price is the amount charged each customer purchasing one unit of a particular item. That is what we call sales price. It is the amount that someone give as an exchange to a product or a service. So when you talk about average sale in the business is determined by adding individual sales to determine a total and then you divide that total by a number of individual sales. For example, if you have um, um, four servers and you want to find the average sale per server, you will take the total sales you got in your restaurant, you divide the number of servers. If you want to have, find the average sale uh, of a certain per customer, you will um, take the total sales you got, you divide by the number of customers. For example, uh, or, uh, you may be you may have total sales which are equal to uh, three thousand nine hundred and two dollars, and maybe you have one forty covers. So, if you want to find the average sales uh, per server or per cover, you will take the total sales which is. $3,902, you divide by the number of covers, which is 140. So, uh, uh, it is very simple. You will get 27.87 US dollar. 
Kabache is one of the servers, another example, had 30 customers and total dollar sales was that one on Saturday night of Friday 13th. Average sale per server for Kabate would be calculated as you take the average sale or you take the total sales for Kabates, you divide by the number of customers. If the total sales was uh, 5665 dollar, you divide by the number of customers, it was 30, then you will get the average sale which is equal to 18.83 dollars. Total number sold. Refer to the total number of menu item sold in a given time period. For example, uh, from, from uh, 1 p.m., for example, to uh, 5 p.m., we want to calculate the number of items sold. So you will sum up all the items sold, then you will get um, the total number of items sold. When you say cover is a term used to describe one dinner regardless on the quantity of good, the personal, the quantity of the products, the item, the, all the, the, the quantity of goods or items the person consumes. So it doesn't have to deal with the quantity that a customer consumed. He is counted one. If you have 20 customers, they may even consume um, five bottles of wine. You will not count covers and say one customer consumed five bottles of wine, so I have five covers. No. It is, it is his seat. If he came and sit and spend, maybe a customer came and sit in the restaurant and spends two hours in the restaurant. So that period we mean we mean that we have one cover. So it is one dinner or one seat for a meal. So if he if he stands up, he goes and somebody else comes and sit on the on the on that seat. So he will be the second cover. So in other words, covers is the term used to show us the number of customers that we got in the restaurant. Total cover, you are summing up the total number of customers you served in a given period. And average covers is determined by taking the total cover, you divide by the number of periods. It can be, you can find covers per hour, then you take total covers, you divide the number of hours of, of, of operation. If you are calculating covers per day, we take the total covers, you divide by the number of days of operation. Covers per server. You will also take the total covers, you divide by the number of servers you have in your restaurant. Seat turnover. Seat turnover is going to help us to know how often our seats are occupied in a certain period of time. For example, the seat turnover is, is going to be uh, you take the number of customers served, you divide the by the number of seats. So if you take the total number of customers you served and you divide by the number of seats you have in your restaurant, you will get what we call seat turnover. You will see how often uh, your restaurant is occupied in a certain period of time. So assume you have 140 customers or covers in your restaurant and you have 75 seats. So the seat turnover would be, you take 140 divided by 75, and then you will get 1.87. This implies that uh, almost two people sat on each seat in your restaurant. It means 
during the period you served today, if it was one day, it means that on that particular day, one seat at least were occupied by almost two people. Not all seats that this happened because it is not really two. It is 1.8. It means if you had the 75 seats, almost 70 seats were occupied by two people. Only a few seats which were occupied by only one people. It means some came, went, and others came and occupied those seats. It means almost two seats, almost two people were occupying one seat. I hope that is clear. Sales mix. This is a term used to describe how relatively one item were sold compared to other items in the same category. So, for example, if you have strip steak, you will compare strip steaks. You can't compare strip, strip steak with maybe fruit platter. They are not in the same category. Huh? They are not strip steak is the main item, is the main cause. Well, fruit plant is a dessert, so you cannot compare them. So we, we calculate the sales mix to, cut, to compare the items in the same category. Like these ones given here are all main items on the menu. So we are going to evaluate how do we sell these items. Which one is most sold compared to others? Like strip steak is 12%. Ginger shrimp is 15%. Lamb chops is 22%. Vegetable burrito is 30%. Chicken breast is 12, 20%. And the total of these percentages must be uh, 100%. So it is very easy if you want to get the sales mix, you must take the individual cell times a hundred you divide by the total cell so for you to get the cells mix you take what you take portion cells or individual cells times 12 times um a hundred then we divide by the total cells so that's how these figures were gotten well clear Food service establishment calculate cost in terms of money. We are now uh, going to cost to sell relationship ratios. So it means if you take cost, you divide by sales, you get one flank for sale. Yes. If you have cost over sales that is equal to cost per one flank or per one dollar cell and we know that when a decimal once is given uh, and you want to get to turn it or to convert it into percentage you must uh, multiply by that uh, that answer by a uh, hundred you must multiply it by a hundred and then you add you add that kawadi percent or that kasain percent. So if you want to calculate an item in terms of percentages, you must times it by a uh, hundred when it is in decimal. Uh, and so that's why we say we put cost time divide by cents times 100 we get what we call cost per cent so simply the formula uh, that you may take is this one that cost is cost per cent is equal to cost times 100 divided by what by cents so this is a simple formula that is easy to uh, uh, have it in mind. Therefore, this cost can be replaced by any any other cost, either prime cost 
fixed cost, labor cost, um, overhead. So you can impress any element if you want to compute it, because this formula applies to any, any, any element. So um, I hope it is clear. So you just uh, get this formula and cram it, cram it if you want. You can put it in your head that cost divided by same then you times 100 will get what we call cost in terms of percentage. Well, uh, let's go to the next slide. So you must also know that um, when you take cost, you divide uh, cost in terms of percent, you will get sales or sales price. So if the given cost percentage were 30%, and the food cost of the item was three dollars the appropriate set price would be you will take uh, 30 you divide by a hundred yes which is good to 0 0.3 and after getting 0 0.3 as um, as in terms of cash, you will now take the cost, the, 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 the sales price. No, the cost you've gotten, you, uh, you will take 3.6, which, which you are told that it is the food cost. Then you divide, you divide by the answer you got. I'll simply use this formula. I'll simply use this formula if you have cost food cost in percent and you have food cost in terms of cash, you can get the sales by saying that cost times 100 dividing by cost percent, you will get the sales. So, the cost is 3.6 dollars times 100 then you will get 330 then you divide uh, uh, 30 as food cost in terms of percentage then you will get 12 and it is i think this is the most easy way of doing this instead of using this other way that has been indicated here So the formula also can be used to determine the cost if the spending power and the cost percent is known. Yeah. So this is the formula that I was telling you that if you want to find sales, you take cost times 100, you divide by the cost in terms of percent. All right, all right, all right. And if you want to calculate the cost and you know the cost percent and sales, you can take sales times cost percent to divide by 100, you will get uh, what we call cost. So the formula is very simple. What you do, you just get it in mind. You will be using it uh, even in the exercises I will give you. Well, Let's look at these uh, elements of cost. We have beverage cost or food cost. And we have what we call desired food cost, of which many organizations aim at 30% food cost. When you say food or beverage cost, this is the amount that has been used to buy raw materials in order to produce a certain dish. 
So many organizations do spend 30% of the sales. Some other establishment go even below 30, uh, which is okay depending on their standards. We have also labor cost. Labor cost is the employment cost or the employee cost. The amount you spend on employees uh, as employees expenses. So be it their salaries, wages, be it the, the, the food that you give them. So all those go to labor cost. Overheads, these are the expenses that establishment is able to uh, incur like cleaning materials, telephone service, fax services, uh, stationary. Uh, all those expenses are recorded as overheads. Sales and cost relationships. Uh, in fact, this relationship can be expressed as follows. Sales are equal to cost of sales plus cost of labor, plus cost of overhead, plus profit. Wow. This is also another formula that if you want to calculate sales, you must take cost of sales plus cost of labor plus cost of overhead and profit. So very simple. You must also have this formula in mind. It will help you. Gross profit. Gross profit is the difference between the price at which goods are sold and the price at which they are bought. So for you to get the gross profit, you will get the sales minus cost. You will get what? Gross profit. Knowing that selling price or sales always equal to 100%. So sales are always equal to 100%. Well, Something now is, the, the cost now is uh, becoming somehow clear. Yeah, I think this is now more uh, visible. So therefore gross profit can be able to labor cost plus overheads plus net profit and taxes if applicable. And the gross profit also can be given by taking gross profit times 100 divided by gross profit in terms of percent. So the, it is the other formula still you had been using of taking cells uh, of which cells are equal to cost times 100 divided by cost in terms of percentage. So it's still, still the, the same formula. And net profit is equal to sales minus total cost. This is how you can calculate net profit. And the total cost is the summation of all costs. The summation of all costs. And those costs include food cost, labor cost, and overheads. So total cost is equal to labor cost plus overheads plus food cost. Well, uh, this is the end of chapter one. And I hope you enjoy it. And if there is any question, uh, you are always welcome to ask uh, and the next lesson i will start from your questions i will start by answering first your questions that you got in there in this uh, uh, chapter mm -hmm.